Heat Act 2019. I'm with Frank Holmes, our uh, resident expert. Frank, thank you again so much for joining us. We love chatting with you. And today I want to talk about one of your new ventures. It's a really exciting um, company. Sort of bridging that gap between um, using quantitative analysis to unlock gold deposits. Tell us about Gold Spot Discoveries. Well, uh, Gold Spot is a very unique entity because it's the first true AI company to go public. And, and they have nine PhDs, 11 other scientists. They are profitable, they are doing work. And what's really special about them is, I would think, is the fact that they will take help these junior explorers, and uh, they will do the data, and they will do the analysis for them, and they'll minimize risk, uh, wasting money for drilling, mm -hmm. uh, the, the sweeter spots. Yeah. And what that does is it uh, maybe get some more discoveries that really get some vibrancy back in this industry, mm -hmm. but they take back a royalty. Okay. So they can actually fund some of these juniors, they'll take back a royalty, and they'll use their, their way of looking at geology. So as human beings, if you're a great geologist, or you're a great surgeon, or you're a great athlete, only 2% can move this cup and rotate it three-dimensionally. Yeah. That's, that's, it's very difficult, uh, and but when you, it comes to AI, all of a sudden you can get rotation 50 times. Mm -hmm. So the capacity to take all these different uh, slides, all these different geostatistical models, et cetera, and do it in real time, eliminates a lot of waste. So I'm so excited about young minds, yeah. 29, 30, 32 year old people, yeah. Denny, uh, the, the CEO, is 33 years old. Right. So it's rejuvenating for me. Yeah, yeah. But when I went and launched uh, uh, Go, Go, Go here, mm -hmm. the smart beta gold ETF, well, it outperformed all the gold uh, fund managers. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and I knew about this idea of using quant approach to looking at picking stocks. Right. And so when I discovered this company, I was just thrilled because it gets right down to the granularity yeah. of discovery. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, well, we'll certainly be following that with interest. I understand they've they've just listed, they've just IPO'd. Spot is a ticker. Okay. And uh, hopefully you'll get uh, Denny over mm -hmm. to interview him because uh, he's full of enthusiasm. And he's built a great team yeah. Yeah. of young, brilliant minds, and it's in Montreal. Mm -hmm. Um, Frank, I wanted to, one of the things that we, um, we chat with you a lot about when, when you're here um, looking at sort of the economy as a whole, you like to use the uh, Purchasing Managers Index as sort of an indicator PMI. of the PMI of an indicator. Now, so I, I'm looking at it, I, it, it's dropped to a two year low in February. What's that, you know, what does that indicate about perhaps economic trends that we're seeing? So for global PMI, for your listeners, it's so important to recognize it's forward looking. Yeah. And it resets every month mm -hmm. with all the data. Mm -hmm. Whereas GDP is behind us. Yeah. So that's why I like it. Mm -hmm. And there's some correlation analysis we've done on this, and I write about it every month. If the one month is above the three months, if the one month is below the three month average. Mm -hmm. And you see the change transformation in oil and copper. Uh, you see it in steel prices. And if they st it stays above for three months, it's even more predictive. Yeah. If it's below for three months in a row, it's extremely predictive. Mm -hmm. So it peaked last April, the global PMI. And we've seen nothing but you know, oil prices start to come off, copper came off, mm -hmm. zinc came off, and then other trade wars, all this stuff. But real PMI was a good precursor. So what, what's alarming was China. So the global PMI is still positive. Yeah. Yeah. And it's sort of cresting and coming down. Whereas China went below 50, right. and that means there's contraction. So what did China do? A really big stimulation, and it looks like it's starting to create a bottom. Mm -hmm. It's not above 50, mm -hmm. and that's going to be very important, that trend. Mm -hmm. Why China? China is 50% of the consumption of all commodities. Yes. So the correlation of PMI and gold and these other commodities is very, very high and extremely relevant. Okay. So I think uh, the trade wars will get over, just like NAFTA. You know, uh, President Trump and all the drama over that stuff, and away we go. Yeah. I think the same thing's going to happen in China. Uh, as good friend Robert Freeland says, that after he's uh, the president, he's going to want to build Trump Towers in China. <laughs> so he's got to be nice. So there's something will get done. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people really understand why the big battle mm -hmm. is an unlevel playing field. Yeah. America has a $14 trillion consuming economy. $14 trillion. Everybody wants to sell to it but they have barriers for Americans selling into 
like dairy products into Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, I know in Texas, uh, my milk costs are half the price. Mm -hmm. My cheese prices are one third the price. So you have barriers here. Yeah. Uh, and so the, chi they're, the battle there is with China is to say, we want a level playing field. Yeah. And, and they're, going to, they're going to make changes. So I think it's very positive. That reset button will be great for the global economy. Okay. Excellent. Frank, thank you again so much for taking the time to speak with us. For more videos, check out smallcappower.com.